Okay, so when we talk about compost tea production, we first have to talk about why do we need compost tea? What are the benefits? What are we looking for? So first of all, what is compost tea? You take some water, you throw in your compost, your vermicompost, and then you mix it, you aerate it, you bring in oxygen through, through pumping air through it, and you provide some food. And what happens is that the microbes in the compost go from the solid state, they are washed out into the water, and then they are multiplied by providing the perfect conditions, the perfect environment. So, the number one agent in compost tea is microbes, microbial diversity. This is really what we are looking for, this is really what we want to gain when we produce compost tea. The second thing is you also extract some nutrients. Very, very little, but maybe there is also, also some, some benefit from there. And definitely, with vermicompost, you, uh, you also have phytohormones like oxine, gibberellin, cytokinin, which are produced mainly by Pseudomonas bacteria, but they are produced in this environment of the vermicomposting situation because the Pseudomonas bacteria, they live on the surface of the earthworms and, and they like the mucus, the slime that is uh, where, where the worm is covered in. And so when you produce compost tea, you want to see a lot of different microbes like bacteria, fungi, protozoa, nematodes, which are washed out, which are bred, which are multiplied into the, into the compost tea process. And, and most of the, the compost that we use for compost tea, we use different sorts of compost, but the most important compost is the earthworm compost. So when we take a look inside, we see that the, the, micro, uh, the, the earthworms they are super active, they work, and what they do, what you cannot see on your video screen, is the bacteria. So the microbes, this huge biodiversity of bacteria, fungi, protozoa, nematodes. This is what, what we want to see, and we see the best results with the vermicompost. So therefore, this is the most, most important part of the compost the substrate. We extract the microbes from the material, from the compost, from the vermicompost, and spread it, we ferment it, we brew it within 24 hours, and we convert it from solid state into a liquid. And then we take seed that we want to drill on the field, on the beds, in the vegetable beds, and we cover the seed hull with microbes. And then we take out the seed after three minutes, so we do it in a, in a concrete mixer, for example. In practice, we throw 100 liter of seed, we throw one and a half, two liter of compost tea in, turn the compost tumbler on, and it rotates, and all the seed get wet. After two, three minutes, when we see all seed is wet, we just uh, pour out the seed, into a container and there it stays. And what happens is that within 10-15 minutes the seed sucks up the water. The seed takes up the water because it wants to germinate. And it immediately sucks up so it doesn't dry but it takes up the water and then the microbes are still on the seed hull. And then, so as soon as the seed is dry again, I can just put it in my drill, I don't need any extra equipment, and I put it out on the field. And what happens is that the seed recognizes there, is, there are some benefits there. So you have to imagine a seed is sitting in the ground and waiting for the best time to germinate. And that can be a long time. So for example, uh, what uh, archaeologists found in the pyramids, 2,000 year, years old uh, barley seed that was brought uh, to the pharaohs and, and they have taken it out and they managed it in a way that it still could germinate after 2,000 years. So you have to imagine, the seed lies in the pyramids for 2,000 years waiting for the best time to germinate. 
And after 2000 years, the, the seed decides, now it's the best time. So what does the seed check? The seed knows the temperature, the seed knows the moisture level in the soil, the seed knows the nutrient level in the soil, the seed knows the microbial activity in the soil, the seed knows the light, the availability of light. If the light is getting more or less, is it spring or autumn? So there is so much information which is captured by the seed at every single second and then it's a certain point the seed decides, let's germinate. Now, this is the time for me to start. So, if you bring the seed better conditions, it will germinate earlier. And this is what we do. So, the seed recognizes, okay, there are a lot of beneficial microorganisms, there is some moisture, there is some nutrients, there is some phytohormones, which are also in vermicompost included. And then the seed decides faster to germinate. So what we have seen from our research is that we see significant increase in germination index. So we did a test, we coated uh, seeds with water only and we coated seeds with compost tea. And then you see that the compost tea seeds, uh, compost tea coated seeds, they germinate faster. So they germinate more quickly. And so that's a significant uh, increase in, uh, in germination index. Another benefit that we have seen is that we see a significant increase in above ground biomass. So it does not only germinate faster when it, the seed has, uh, finds uh, perfect conditions, but it also grows faster. And this is super important, especially for organic agriculture, because the faster uh, the, the population on the field from my, from my cash crop or from my cover crop is developing, the less weed, the less problems with pests and diseases and so we get. So, what does happen? When the seed lays in the ground and the, the, the seed decides to germinate, then it starts growing the taproot first and what it does, it takes some microbes from the seed hull and starts transporting them into the ground. So the root is a kind of transport system. It's like a railway. It's like a train that is growing, is traveling into the ground. And at the beginning, it's, in, it's, it's uh, traveling into the topsoil and then later on, it's traveling into the subsoil. So the plant root is taking the microorgan with microorganisms with them, it's traveling them down, and then it's breeding them with the root exudate, as I already explained. So this is a very important thing because it's the most clever way to use this kind of product for seed inoculation. And what we end up is we see significant results with seed germination on the field an impact in practice with only one liter of compost per hectare. So, you know, a field, one hectare, 10,000 square meter. So that's a large field. It's like uh, three soccer fields uh, in size. With only one liter of compost, we can have an impact on the development of plants. So this is the reason why we do this, because we want to see an impact in soil health we want to see a change in soil health and we want to have healthier plants which are more resilient and need less mineral fertilizer, need less uh, pesticides and need less service from our side as a farmer. Okay, so here we see a compost tea brewer. Uh, a brewer means that uh, it contains the about 100 liter of water. So we fill it up with water. We throw in our substrate or mix from vermicompost and different other composts to increase biodiversity. And then we start a membrane pump and the membrane pump pushes air through the bottom of this tank. So if we take a look inside, you can see that there is the whole bottom is from created from from a black membrane and the membrane has tiny holes 
And when we push air through these tiny holes from the bottom, then the magic bubble happens and the bubbles raise up. And what they do is they mix the compost. So they make sure the compost cannot fall down and lay down and create anaerobic layers because that's what we do not want to have, anaerobic conditions. But it makes sure that the, the compost is, is staying active, is thrown around in the tank and, and therefore the microbes can, can be released from the organic material and can, can be transported to the, to the water. And what it also makes, these bubbles, they provide the oxygen. So if you pump air in, air also has oxygen. So that's important for the microbes to breathe, to work and, and, and to multiply. So we do that for 24 hours. There is a lid on top of it. Usually uh, we put some food in it so that it's a composition of different food resources because we want to feed different, we want to feed a, a, a diversity of microbes. So we need different food resources. We have the compost in, the food in, we have the water, we have the air and we brew it for about 24 hours. And after 24 hours, we stop the, the, the pump. And then the, the light uh, substances like wood debris or so, they, they float on, on top of the, of the tea and the solid material goes down. And, and then we can take out <coughs> the compost tea here and we pour it out and then we can use it either for seed coating or we can put it in a sprayer or, or you can pour it in the ground as, as you like to have. So if you, if you spray it on a field or in a, in a vineyard or in an orchard or so, we recommend about 25 liters per hectare. So this would be good for four hectares, which is uh, one hectare is two and a half acres. And if you, if you use it for seed coating, then we end up like uh, 100 liter of seed needs, depending on the seed, how much, how quickly it absorbs the water. Uh, 100 liter of seed needs approximately one to two liter of compost tea. So at the end, if you use it for seed coating, you can uh, uh, end up with one liter of compost per hectare of land. Again, one hectare of land, two and a half acres. So one glass of compost for one acre of land. And you still have an impact because you deliver the microbe exactly to that place, to that location where you get the most benefit out, out of it, to the seed hull. Again, when the taproot is starting growing, it takes some microbes and then it transports in the soil and it breeds it. So this is the best way. If you just pour it on the ground, you have it on the surface. Maybe some of the microbes are killed by sunlight, by dry drought or something else. And establishing the microbiome in the soil is very difficult. But if you put it on the seed, you exactly put it to that location where you get the most benefit out of it. And then you can really reduce the amount so this facility in the background would be good for covering 500,000 hectares of land with seed coating. Amazing, isn't it?